it's going. It's going. It's going. <laughs> it's Monday. It's going. It's going. It's Monday, right? We're back. Episode number dose or whatever it comes out at. I have no idea <laughs> the order, but um, here we are. I'm having um, a little cream sickle. A um, little uh, basically like a, I don't know. It's whipped cream, vodka, and some orange juice this morning um, or today because we're doing this. <laughs> whatever <laughs> don't matter it's delicious uh i went with something a little uh, more oj related a little brunchish a little brunchish after eating all weekend we had friends giving this weekend okay oh, fun. um i had to make some collards um which was amazing um so i ate a lot this weekend and then we made like oh i don't know 50 60 cookies last what night kind of cookies? christmas cookies so we did regular sugar we did chocolate sugar and then obviously my my fave snicker dudes a little okay. snicker dudes okay and then there was one i was gonna make but you know, i was getting cookied out <laughs> it's a cinnamon roll cookie so we're gonna make those, those in a couple sound good we're gonna make those for christmas and i'll be bringing those in because there you go roll. yeah that's Sunday. Looks, yeah. did you yeah not homemade though i can get behind all pop them in the oven was was chili and cinnamon rolls a thing when you guys were kids yeah um yes ab- absolutely Okay, yeah. So like together? Yeah. I mean, I didn't oh. do it. You've never it had it? No. Really? That's So the reason I ask is because so whenever we had like chili day in high school or like in grade school or anything like that, you always got a cinnamon roll. So for breakfast, if they had cinnamon rolls out and it was chili day, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm getting <laughs> cinnamon rolls. Let's go. <laughs> so the, the reason I ask is for whatever reason, it, it must be in Iowa, like a Midwest, Midwest thing, or I don't know. People think you're crazy. When you start talking about chili and cinnamon rolls, and I thought it was a normal thing. It sounds really good. It's absolutely yeah, it's not great. normal, <laughs> um, but it is good. It's it absolutely not good. normal, but it's absolutely no. great. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I mean, because you get the the cinnamon plays well with with the chili. Then you got the I sweet. Throw a little, and then you got a little. Spicy. I always throw a little cinnamon in my chili, anyways. I do too. Just give a little bit of. As do I. Oh yeah, but I mean that's perfect for this time of year. It's cold. It's. Oh, yeah. It's breezy. I mean, that... What's today? High of 28? That blizzard or a huge blizzard supposed to be coming through today, which I don't think we're really going to get anything. Yeah, it's like sweeping the nation and north side. I don't think that we're really going to get anything, but up north, you know, northern parts of Minnesota, Michigan, everything like that, they're going to get here. Yeah. We've got the wind. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Absolutely. And that was the first thing. So, like you said, that time of year, so chili always goes goes good with this time of year. You know what happens around this time of year, though? Is preparing for next year, right? So today's theme is end of the year prep, or not end of year prep, things you should be doing at the end of the year um, to wrap things up before Christmas. Uh, next episode, we'll actually be going into new year prep a little more in detail. So um, what do we mean by end of the year and, and things you need to consider or get ready for um, as you close the year? Not prep for the new year, but just getting everything bundled up for the year. Well, I think some of the stuff that always happens or not always, but a lot of times it happens is, you know, employers are giving out bonuses at the end of the year Um, and what to do with those bonuses instead of just go crazy and spend all that money right away is, is something that you should sit down and talk with your advisor about what, whether that bonus is a hundred dollars or, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in some capacity in between like you, that money is money that maybe you weren't expecting throughout the year. So understanding that, being able to put it into different places that are going to put you in a better place is is probably the right right thing to do. And even if you were anticipating it, right? I mean, there's things that come into a bonus. One, it's money. Helpful. That It should not be part of your normal plan, right? Even Correct. if you get it every year, I don't care. It right. should not be a not part guaranteed. of your normal plan. That should always be a cherry on top because it is not guaranteed. Um, two, as my phone vibrates, um, is the taxes. You still pay taxes on it. Correct. Right. And that could kick you to another tax bracket. I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of things that get into the tax realm of it. But those are like the two main things you got to worry about. Um, for me, it's it's a it's a very simple answer what to do with a bonus. Right. You've created a plan. You know what you need to do. That's just extra money to plug into that plan. Right. So we know you have X percent going into savings, X percent paying off debt. Just same plan. It's just extra money. Just keep going with and your plan. And then maybe some fun. And then, yeah. well, fun's always part of the plan. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you haven't maxed out a Roth or anything like that, maybe that's something you talk with your 
you right. know, tax professional and, and your planner at the same time, your financial planner and say, Hey, you know, maybe this is the best place for it. Let's, you know, let's allocate this. Let's max that sucker out and let's build ourselves for a better future. Really yeah. There could be some forward looking stuff. If you have a big purchase next year, yeah. something you're looking for, put it aside, put it into something that is ready for it next year. Absolutely. And I think you made a good point earlier, Lisa, with, with it, it's not guaranteed. So, yeah. and so he's like, let's, let's, our p- current plan is the money that we're expecting that salary or that, that hourly wage throughout the year or whatever it is, you know, your income from your business. Like that's the stuff that we're expecting. These bonuses and these cherries on top, again, just like you said, let's, let's help, let's help put the gas pedal down a little bit on our plan and let's pump it full rather than, you know, maybe just saying, okay, I'm going to spend all this just because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. I think that's a, a huge piece of it of just because I wasn't expecting it or if I was, I'm going to go, you know, I'm, I'm going to go spend it on the certain <laughs> things and we'll get that way when we get to the tax season too. Cause I have a really, uh, I have a problem with people getting money back one and then two, what they do with the money back, but that's a different show. But I think it's important to realize that the timing of the bonus too, right? So if, say for example, um, we get the bonus before Christmas and a lot of people out there, Christmas is the hardest, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paying bills, getting presents because uh, of kids and all of those things that come into play. Yeah. Towards unexpected the end of the year. things always pop up. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's uh, is that a side show? Or uh, uh, <laughs> well, no, show? Side, <laughs> side show hits a little too close to <laughs> okay. home. So let's just not talk about it. Okay, let's, okay. okay. let's just take it to the normal show. All right. All right. <laughs> The inside story of that's funny. Um, <laughs> if you're watching YouTube, you'll probably get a little hint yeah, at that inside story. So uh, just look at his face, one side <laughs> of it, um, <laughs> the correct side. Back to it, uh, meaning, you know, what do you do when you do get it before? And I'm a huge proponent of you got to remain happy, right? If, for example, you we have a plan. You're working with us. You have a plan, right? If we're on pace with that plan or ahead, then really that's money that we can do a little more and put a little more into that fun account or do that a little more extravagant gift, right? Absolutely. Because you need, to, you need to live in the now and you need to live happy and that'll mm-hmm. take care of it. If you're behind in your plan or behind on bills, I want you to create that as that same feeling, right? I know it's debt and all that, but if you took care of it now, as a Christmas present to yourself with that bonus, as opposed to taking it and then spending it all and then still being in that hole, which means you're actually deeper in that hole. Yes. It might not feel great now, but later you're going to feel a lot better to be like, how did I pay that off so fast? Oh, because you know, I actually put X towards it mm-hmm. from my bonus as opposed to spending that, um, on, you know, frivolous things. Not everything's frivolous, but, um, it's really gets down to that important piece. And I think, that's what we need to be discussing more of with clients and they need to come to us of the emotional mindset, right? The money mindset of it, because you have to balance that or else you can spend a little bit. Right. And I think, I think a big thing that you mentioned there and helping pay down that debt and different stuff is, you know, a lot of times debt is cyclical. So when you don't, or it compounds on itself, just like, just like we compound, you know, our accounts and we get those, get those returns and we let those compound on top of each other. Debt does the same thing. And when we pay down that a little bit earlier, well, we're knocking some of those interest payments off at the end. So we're not paying as much interest, different stuff like that, that, you know, just like you said, when we pay it off faster and we're like, Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't pay as much interest on this or, you know, it wasn't as big of a burden as what I thought. Just being smart with it, I think, is the biggest thing. And asking questions. Don't be afraid to just call us up or email us. Slack us if, you know, if that's a preferred method of communication. You just say, hey, I got this. What's a good thing to do with it? I, I mean, I don't necessarily need it or I absolutely need it. And there's a couple places that it could go. What do you think is best? Yeah, I agree with that. And I think the challenge with that is... We talk about money mindset. So you s- you get the money, you see something maybe you want to buy, you get tangible, like feel like I, oh, yeah. I get this versus paying down debt. You put it towards it. What you see is the money maybe going down, but there isn't like a tangible thing you're getting from it at that moment. So 
which makes it challenging. But I think if you can make some kind of game out of it, like, you know, I'm starting at 20,000 in debt, I just put 5,000 towards it, 15. Um, it gets a little bit more exciting and it, it's a feeling of accomplishment that you get over time and it'll feel really good when that's gone. It just, it just takes time. It's true. Um, I'll, I'll mention some things on debt and then we'll get into besides bonuses. What are yeah. some other things yeah. we got to do? Um, but also I, I, I don't want everyone to fixate on getting out of debt as fast as possible. Right. Correct. There's, there's bad and good debt. Oh, yeah. right. Um, and we can talk a lot, a lot about that, but you know, your bad debt being your credit cards, um, really is the worst debt. Mm -hmm. Um, and then student loans. Um, but like your mortgage isn't really your car, as long as you're not underwater a ton, right. isn't, um, those are all assets that you can use to gain money. So that's what we mean by good versus bad. Yeah. Good. Something that is an event that is an asset also that could make you money bad being, well, it's just high interest and it's not doing anything for you. Um, so when we say this, we're talking about putting it extra. We're not saying, you know, Put it all towards your good debt. It's really focused on the bad debt that's actually hurting you, not the other. Um, and, and to your point, Lisa, also reward yourself. Like right. if you oh have a yeah. five thousand dollar bonus, don't just do five thousand. Maybe do four. Right. And then get whatever you want. Go have a nice dinner. Like be excited <laughs> right. still too. It's not all or nothing. Right. <laughs> a little bit of mix. <laughs> it'll it'll go a long way. Absolutely. And you, just like you said, like that that high interest rate. Like, and I've. You hear this a lot, and you, if you do read some of these finance or money books and different stuff, like money is kind of a game. And if we can beat that interest rate, mm -hmm. then we can leverage that debt. And that's what Stoy's talking about with, you know, mortgages and those low interest rates. But credit cards, different stuff like that that have 27% interest rates, you got to be a little realistic on this one. So, yeah, those are those are those things, like you said. I mean, if we can lever, don't necessarily put it towards that good debt because – if we put it into one of those investment accounts and we beat that money, we're better off in the long run. All right. So we beat bonus to death. What oh are yeah. some other things at the end of the year that um, you should be wrapping up or considering in prepping for kicking off this new year? I think sticking with kind of the employee side right now is if you have benefits that end and don't move forward like a flexible spending account. So what do you have in there? Um, to buy medical health things, finish it out, make sure it's a use it or lose it thing. Um, so making sure you're just checking your employee benefits, what you've been having, what you have this year and make sure you use it or you lose it. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Flex spending accounts that people also sometimes think are their health savings accounts, right. HSAs Different. and FSAs because you know, our industry loves right. you know, using Acronyms. letters. <laughs> Acronyms are amazing. Um, and a lot of people get those confused. Right. And they think, oh, it rolls over. No, that's the HSA. It's an account. It'll always be there. FSA is the one that cuts off. And you really need to be cognizant of that. Also, the dependent care mm -hmm. as well, FSA. Those both just every year start over. So if you're not using it, you will lose it. Lose it. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, I think another one coming into th the end of the year as you get going is take time to reflect right? Um, and we do it in this episode of the end of the year, not for New Year prep, because now is the time to reflect, mm -hmm. to start thinking about what we want to do next year. So take time to reflect. Be with family. If you don't oh have yeah. family, then be with yourself. I don't care. But you need to take the time to just what happened this year. What are great things, wins, losses, where I want to go, what do I want to do? Um, you know, if, if you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or any of those, um, you know, Kwanzaa, there's another one. There's a newer one. and I want to kind of do it, but I don't remember the name. Um, whatever you do during the holiday season is just, it's time to relax. It's time to be like, okay, this year, you know, kicked my ass. I kicked its ass. We both have black eyes. <laughs> like <Right. laughs> Whatever it is, right? This um, year, I think this year was was good and bad for a lot of people. I think yeah. just, just the COVID is still going on. Right. Life is still going on. And there's been a lot of good things I've heard people go through. So it, I think we'll see a lot of both black eyes. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> it will oh be yeah. a lot of, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. And um, that those are important things. And then it's have fun. Enjoy the holidays. Hopefully a lot of you have some time off, a day or two at least. Um, and then just enjoy it, right? Enjoy the time. Don't stress about the money right now. Don't don't do that. Don't waste 
time with your family um, and friends because, you know, you are in debt or whatever. Or someone got a fancy car with a giant bow, yeah. which those bows are expensive. I, I don't understand. Um, just just to have fun and enjoy it. And then once it's done, all right, it's, it's go time. It's time for us to plan. Get with your planner. Get with us. And let's get into next year and actually truly focus on dominating. I know, um, I think it was in my intro, I told the story about Tay and yeah. in the money mindset of focusing on expenses and income. I want to take that back to this too. Don't focus on how little of money or whatever it is right now during this time. That's not the time for it. Come January, now it's time for us to focus on how can we increase that and not do and be where we were um, the previous year. So I think back looking at like my holiday experiences, you know, you think about, okay, you, you did get gifts. Do I remember all the gifts? Probably not. Um, but being around family or having some kind of meal, like I remember certain things. I remember going to my grandparents' uh, country club and having food and caroling and all of those things. Like those stand out for me rather than a gift. Yeah, it's it's definitely that. It's more atmospheric, right? It's right. that atmosphere that you're around and, and the joy of just being around family and celebrating each other during those holidays. Um, and, you know, as a parent or, you know, as you're buying gifts for other people, you know, Stoy, you mentioned earlier, like that feeling of like, okay, we can relax. And we talked about the importance of hiring a professional with, with Cheryl. And, uh, that aids to that, you know, hi having that proper professional and go out and talk to multiple people. If, if that's what it takes, interview, you know, your planners, interview your advisors, whatever it might be until you find that, that one person that fits right for you. But in the end, once this time comes again next year and you've been working with somebody throughout the whole year, I'm pretty sure you're going to be in a happier place because that person has taken some of that burden off your shoulders, if not all of that burden off your shoulders and saying, hey, you're good. We don't need to worry about this and penny pinch every single dollar and every single paycheck. Agreed. What's uh, one reflection you guys have this year? We're asking our audience to do it, so I figure... I mean, for me, this was a, this was a huge year for me. You know, I've, I've got to go through life events or had life events that are happening currently, um, that now get, give me a different perspective on things and help me relate to, to, uh, future clients a lot more as, you know, I got married in May, uh, you know, seven months we've been married now. So your house we're, flooded like when you got married. Yeah. Right? My house flooded when <laughs> we got Sounds married. About right. like yeah. Immediately. <laughs> so, so went through, you know, marriage and that, you know, <laughs> then right flooding. away. And then all of a sudden now we're in property and casualty insurance and I'm having to deal with that like crazy. And then, you know, my, my wife is just over halfway in her pregnancy. So, you know, we got a kid on the way and it's planning for daycares and planning for building a nursery and then having, you know, all the cribs, the bassets, the, swaddles the bottles everything in all this prep and it can be overwhelming but at the same time like I'm looking at this is like this is one of the best things that's ever going to happen in my life so I'm excited about this that's where I know my money mindset has changed a lot during these times it's just like this is stuff that yeah I know it, it you don't always want to spend the money but at the same time when it's towards something like this like I have no problems doing it and I'm like yes I, I love this mm -hmm. Now, am I being smart about it and making sure that I'm not buying, you know, some electric Rolls Royce for when my kid turns three? Yeah, I'm <laughs> doing, you know, I'm doing that. But at the same time, should I return that? that under the <laughs> <this year? laughs> but at the same, but at the same time, I am going out and I'm getting prepped for that time. So I think it's, you know, that's my end of the year prep right now is making sure that I'm prepped for a baby the coming in April so 2022. Rock your world. Yeah. Absolutely. For Baby. Ever. <laughs> um, mine would have to be, man, I don't know how to like sum it up in a word per se. Um, but I mean, we had a lot going on. So last year with obviously um, the race wars with COVID, that that was a lot. It was heavy. Um, my wife and I, um, Michelle didn't grow up the way I did, obviously, clearly. And so her learning that, hey, I, she now has two children that are black, like how is this going to affect? So ending last year going into 21, not knowing is that going to continue? How is this whole thing going to react? Um, you know, you still got COVID and she's on the front lines, obviously, with yep. both of all three of our wives are that way. And 
that's tough on them. A lot of hours, um, on, you know, our own side, you know, we first year we're hiring you late in the year. Um, you know, we, we lost Josh, um, James is different role. We launched a podcast, right? Um, my first graders in school for the first time in person, like a lot of cool different things. Um, and, and then losing my mother, um, as well, all of it wrapped up to, I realized like now I'm focusing more on the relationship with people, Mm -hmm. like legitimately cut a lot of people out, but the relationship with others and in the time with your family, I think that happens when we get older, right? You just, what's more important. Um, and that goes correlates right back to my money mindset of my time is valuable. And I value my time way more than I do a dollar now. Um, And I think that's even hit home harder now. Um, And going into this year of, you know what, you know, we're going to Phoenix for Christmas and and the boys are going to love it. And, you know, flight wasn't cheap, but that memory is worth, I don't, I don't know, but infinity, a right. million, infinity like and what, what, at yeah. the end, right? It like is, infinity yeah. and beyond. Did, <laughs> did you just do a Buzz Lightyear? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, little Toy Story. Oh, cry. <laughs> <laughs> I need more Toy Story. Um, so uh, the, I don't know how to wrap that up like that, but that's that's for me. That's that's what it is for me. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Since you threw the question out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. I think same same kind of thing. Like family. Like we had a lot of stuff happen this year with family. Um. My wife's family is from New Hampshire, so we hadn't seen them, you know, through COVID for over a year and a half. So like, being able to see them, we had a new baby in September, so a second child. So adding that layer to our family, um, our other daughter in March got really sick and was in the ICU for a week. So we had this a lot of happy stuff, a lot of sad stuff, and a lot of just being grateful. Um, so it was a it was quite a year. And then yeah, my wife's on the front lines, healthcare. Same thing. It's very stressful. I had some changes in career and work, and that's exciting for me. So all in all, good year, family, health. Those are my two main values and things I focus on for the future. And I think money mindset for me, too, around that, it's stressful going through all those things. So a health crisis, you're not sure what hospital bill is going to be coming after being in the ICU for a week. I mean, we were pan- panicking. <laughs> with that. What is that going to look like? You have no idea. Yeah. Luckily, we have health insurance. So that's helpful. Um, but, you know, not everybody does, but it's a stressful time. New baby, same thing. You have no idea what things are going to cost and what, it, what it's like really afterwards. But we're, we're family. We stick together and we just talk through it. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned is to really... I'm someone that sort of clams up and doesn't want to talk about it and I get quiet and my spouse brings out says, No, we've got to sit down, we've got to talk about it. Yeah. Like we we gotta do this. So she doesn't stay quiet. No, she doesn't <laughs> stay quiet. No one knows her, she does not stay nope. quiet. So, you know, we sit down and we talk through it and I think that's for me, that's really important. I think even for couples out there, like look it may be a challenge, but to just sit down and talk about what's going on. Ups, downs, good, bad, all of that, and then talk through it, and especially if there's money <laughs> involved in it, like just really have a conversation. And you know, one of these, one of these probably pulling you to the table <laughs> to right. sit down yeah. and talk about it. For sure. So it's, it's good to have that balance. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think we all hit home on this, and this is something that we're trying to drive home with our clients. There's going to be bumps. There's going to be bruises but it's celebrating the small wins and having a positive outlook Mm -hmm. is what we're trying to instill in these clients. You might come in lumped, bumped, bruised up and looking for a change and to make that change. Um, And we'll talk about that new year prep and that, you know, new year's resolutions, not just physically, but mentally with your money and everything like that as well. Um, But celebrate those small wins. Just be positive that, you know, I am doing the right things. I will, you know, talking to somebody, about my finances and helping change that mindset. I'm going to be a be- in a better place in the future. Because it's it's a long game, right? It's a long yeah. game. It's not a short thing. You don't no. get rich quick. Some people do. But our, our whole society of, you know, um, getting rich quick or, you know, ha- having to have that need filled immediately, it's not accurate. It's not how you build true wealth. So um, realize it's going to be a long thing. Just keep moving forward. And everyone's there's going to be people in your court. I Michelle and I were talking about this on the way because today we forgot that our daycare lady took the day off or, or told us, and she told us plenty of time in, a, right. in advance. 
and I'm like working out. And she's like, uh, we forgot. And I was like, shit. And so she figured it out because we have a flock, right? So one of our good friends who also has kids the same age, she's going to take them at certain hours, blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, you have people in your core, mm-hmm. whether you know that or not. Yeah. That you is your flock and help. that's going to help. <laughs> you have to be yeah. able to ask. To ask. Um, because there's a lot of people out there willing just to help you. And it might just be something small that helps you continue to move forward because you move forward and you're going to be all right as long as you keep moving forward. So um, I think it's really good for, for end of year end of year talk like that. I really do. Um, now let's let's change gears. It's still end of the year stuff. But let's change gears focusing on off of them a little bit. Uh, we've pounded them emotionally yep. for the last 28 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's lighten it a little bit and let's talk about kind of where the market is. And I and very vague question, by the way. I don't just mean the stock market. I mean overall, um, economy, all of that, wherever you want to go. What happens towards the end of the year, historically? What do you think is going to happen at the n- towards the end of this year and the last you know month we have? Um, and then third, what happened this year that was the biggest change to the overall market and economy, in your opinion? It's like three questions. That's a lot forget. of questions, Doy. So for, <laughs> for the... I, Someone write those down. Yeah. <laughs> for the biggest remember. change that happened and something that we haven't really done in the past is is that stimulus money and pumping money back into the economy. Every, you know, every single time that we did that, every single amount of money that we got inflated the markets, inflated the whole economy as a whole. It didn't... There was no real... The market this year or as it kept growing to higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, and never really had that pullback that we were all looking for, was an anomaly. I can't talk right now, obviously, because of my face, but uh, it was it was different than what you're going to see if you look in years past. It's not always just going to fly up the way that it did, or, hey, we hit a new high today. Oh, hey, the next day, we hit a new high today. Next week, oh, we we hit a new high by a couple percent. Like, it just doesn't always happen like that. Now, does the market go up steadily? Yeah, it does. But the way that it did this year is very, very different. I agree. Um, And it's really, it hasn't stopped. Everyone's going to reflect back on um, um, Omicron. I don't know how you pronounce it. The last variant. Yeah. Um, And we had a little bit of a dip. They're going to say, oh, that was part of the correction. No. Um, they're going to say, well, we had, you know, COVID in 2020. That was a correction. No, it wasn't a market economic correction. That was an event called the Black Swan event. Those happen, mm-hmm. but it didn't spin us into a correction. No. Um, now, I want to bet with Brian because <laughs> it did sp- uh, spin us into, um, how, what, what was our bet again? Um, you went with a true uh, definition of a recession. Yes, yes, that's what it was. True definition. It did. True definition. Won me some money. <laughs> <laughs> but from the overall market, it hasn't. It's How'd been you going spend up. that money? Huh? How'd you spend the money? Fun? Um, I think I still have it. Okay. Save Actually, it. I saved save it, it. Save because it. we did it. another bet on the Falcons <laughs> <laughs> getting uh, over, <laughs> okay. over under six wins. So I'm just trying to dumb on the money. No big <laughs> deal. Um, it's play money, right? Thanks, Brian. Uh, but what I was getting back to is, that didn't really affect the market. And then we st- keep inflating it, and that's why it's keep going higher and higher and higher. And all these companies are very vastly overvalued. Now, it might be a true value, but you have to let the company actually, from their financials, catch up to that value. And we're at a giant gap. That's what causes a correction. And we yeah. still have not gotten one. That's what's crazy to me this year. And it all has to, a lot of it, for me, like you said, for the last well, almost year and a half, two years, is because we've just threw in trillions of dollars, which and, and said good luck. It's it's just printing it on paper and saying, "Oh, here you go, here you go, here you go." At some point, as great as that feels to get that get that money to come to us that we weren't necessarily expecting or anticipating, it's probably gonna we're gonna feel that in the end. It's gonna be a teeter totter where we're at this high right now. And then all of a sudden, that weight's going to get lifted off that other side, and it's going to bring us back down to reality. As it should. And we are waiting for it. I feel like the question we would get a lot or we get a lot is, you know, should I invest now? And is that, it's at a high or it's at a low. What do you, what do you guys tell people? Um, 
you know, we we were conservative this year because of not really. I mean, we assumed the correction um, well before, and then we got another stimulus, which was. I don't think we should have got that last one, but neither here nor there. Um, so we were kind of keeping some in cash. We were keeping some on a hedge against the market correction and not being as aggressive investing in per se. Um, we added some shares here and there, but not being as aggressive as getting in, but more along the lines of playing it safe and waiting. Um, now, obviously, the market just kept going, and it's still going. Yeah. Um, but that was our philosophy, mm-hmm. right? Um, we would rather hold back a little bit than getting stuck, right? So if it's – what I mean by that is if we're, we're continuously investing and it's at all-time highs, right, All after all-time highs, we now have no cash and reserves. This thing corrects. All we can do is sit there, and we're stuck, and we have to wait unless we want to sell at a loss. What our philosophy would be is we're at all-time highs. Let's keep reserves and cash. We can play a little bit. That thing corrects. Now we can take our reserves and cash and apply it to a corrected market. Now when it goes back up, now we're winning more than Mm -hmm. a lot more, sometimes double, sometimes one and a half because of that. And we did that, obviously, with travel. So – um. My advice now going into to next year, um, we'll hit upon more in the new year, but that would be the reflection of what happened in 2021. Well, and we mentioned it earlier, it's a long game. It's a long con. Like, it's not, it's not this immediate thing that's going to happen. That's why we're actively looking at the markets every day. We're actively anticipating or looking for that correction to say, hey, we're ready to deploy this money when it does happen. And I think that's what's, you know, kind of separates us from, a lot of people as well is we are sitting here saying, okay, the market's doing this. We're looking constantly ready to add those positions or ready to reprice, whatever it might be and saying, Hey, we do have this cash on hand. Now is a good time. And like you said, we just did it with a lot of travel. We repositioned in some other uh, longer plays that we have as well, but we're always ready. It's just a matter of when that, when that play comes and having the flexibility in the cash on reserves to do it. Yeah, so I think you mentioned um, the stimulus, which I think, you know, stimulus came in a lot of different ways, child tax credit, other stimulus as well. Um, And then you have what people feel right now, so that inflation. So I just paid 50 bucks to fill up my car, which I have not done in forever. And everyone's talking about how much turkey is and all that stuff, how prices have gone up. So I think people are starting to feel a little bit kind of on the main street. Um, so I think that'll be an interesting to see where that goes into this next 2022. If it impacts anything, cash flow, how people feel. It's, it's more about how people feel. Absolutely. Right? Which is like, like we're, since we're on the streets, we can feel that. But like the Fed finally realizing that and saying that it's not transitory right. inflation. <laughs> um, when What's for transitory? Months, just in case for listening. It, not long lasting, yeah, not basically. Long lasting. Not long lasting inflation. Which, you know, when months ago, we're all starting to feel that, right? We're starting to be like, well, I guess it's going up a little bit. Right. Or <laughs> literally yesterday, I, I, I smoked a pork butt. Delicious. One of my best ones ever. And I, I realized it was in my freezer, and it was from 2020, almost a year ago. It was $19. I just went and looked, and I'm we're pushing 30s yeah. for the same cut of meat. And it's like, oh, yeah, no nah, nah inflation, though. It's transitory to the short, ter- short time. It'll be fine. <laughs> No, it's, it's going to continue to happen, and it's going to be a lot longer. And will we spin into a bear market? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but this inflation is going to end up being, you know, a bigger deal than Main Street's talking about right now. Now you're starting to see that everyone flip and the media focusing on, oh, yep, oh, inflation's a thing. And you don't have to tell us. Everyone knows. Um, gas prices, to me, aren't actually correlated as much to inflation. Mm-hmm. Um, the oil game's a different war. <laughs> um, it has nothing to do with, you know, presidents right. and all of that stuff. It's its own game. Um, so that's not really the inflation that everyone should be really feeling. It's the food. It's all the other living supplies that are now 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% higher. Yeah. And you know, if we want to stick on that, you know, the gas prices, the car train, like, Look at the prices of used cars in the car market is insane. I was just toying around the other day. Um, my car, when I got it down in our back in 2017 to now, what dealerships are selling it is the exact same price, and it's almost 60,000 miles on it. 
It's nice. It's real nice. The I mean, problem is, is you couldn't. You would sell it and then go pay. Right. You'd be in it, I mean, the like, it's, it's like, what the hell is going it's, on? It's evening itself out because obviously they're selling these cars at higher prices. My equity in my car is technically more, but it's not really more. It's not be, real. It's just relative. Yeah, it's not real. But that that's a great example. And like when you brought up gas. I look all the time. I'm, I'm just like anybody else. I'm like, ah, what's what's out there right now? I'm like that is this is insane. I remember when my brother bought his pickup compared to when it started. Inflation really hit. I'm like, you lucked out before this, and pickups are inflated like crazy right now. Everybody wants one because it's the winter time, yep. and it's it's really and bad. then it just inflated it bad. I don't want a pickup, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm good. Not everybody. <laughs> Not everybody. Um, <laughs> To answer the w- the third question, because I don't remember the first two that we <laughs> asked, um, but the third one specifically about what it affected the most outside of what you answered that we dove in on, um, I would have to say is the change of this working from home virtual stuff. Yeah. Overall, the whole the whole thing, the whole theme of it. Um, I not only do I think it's awesome, I think it's going to be instilled and has changed the way business is done um it's changed the way we live entirely um which one should only hopefully create healthier people from getting spreading things um but it allows us to reach more people specifically our job right we can now not have to worry about the person being like oh you have to meet them in person and all of that or physically be there you don't have to do that and people are okay with it now now we've been doing virtual stuff five, six, seven years, um, I've always had virtual meetings. Now we have a lot more virtual meetings and people are getting comfortable with that and realizing that they can trust somebody that maybe they see once a year or never. They just right. virtually see them. Um, and I think that's really, really good. I, re- I really do. I think that change is going to be um, one of the best things that has happened. Um, and I'm glad, partially glad we went through the pandemic for innovation purposes Clearly not because millions of people died, but for innovation purposes, we actually had time to sit down and be like, how do we make things more efficient going forward? Yeah. Um, and that's one of the biggest ones that I, I see affecting. Obviously, it was awesome for 21, mm-hmm. but going forward, it's it's going to, to grow. Um, I want to push change faster because I think, you you know, maybe it's your strategic plan one year out or two yeah. years out. I'm going to do this. And you're like, well, no, I've got to do this now. Yeah. Like, I need to stay relevant. I need to stay in front of people. I need to be able to connect with people. So let's, let's just make this change now. Let's not think about it. Absolutely. And and then another thing with, you know, more and more people working from home is their hours, hours, business hours, aren't necessarily as much of this before it was, it was blocking people from coming to meet people. You know, you have to take time off or you have to come over your lunch break or you have to do different stuff like that. Now it's, yeah, I'm at home. I can, you know, I can buzz over for a half hour. I can buzz over for 45 minutes. As long as I'm getting my work done, my boss doesn't necessarily care. And I think that changes from, hey, no, you have to be here 8 to 5, 9 to 5, whatever it is, and you are working this whole time. You have to get your stuff done. I also think it probably, like you said, efficiencies. If somebody's like, okay, I'm at home. You know, my hours are this, X, whatever it is. I knock out all my work. I knock out my work, and I'm done for the day. Now, I'll, I'm going to hit upon some Trinity piece, you know, CEO. I sometimes have to talk about it and talk about real estate with this, right? So right. for our investors or future investors, um, we really invest in retail, mainly office, <laughs> some industrial. Um, so you want to hit upon those two things of what's going on or what has gone on in 21. Um, office, obviously, a lot of people working from home, doing the virtual stuff. Um, what we saw in 20 and through 21 was a flock of everyone cutting down their square footage, letting people work from home. What you're starting to now start to see is everyone coming back in wanting more square footage because they want people to have work areas and they need to have the ability for people to come in and out fluidly because they are doing that. They are transitioning more to, yes, you have to be on site, do your work, but you don't have to be here all the time. Um, you know, a couple of local firms would do a set of employees would be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The others would be Tuesday, Thursday. Next week, it'd be Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, guys. Monday, Wednesday, right? 
So I think you're going to see a lot of mold of that. So, so you see more space? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're seeing them grabbing more space because they need people spread out. Mm -hmm. They don't want them on top of each other. Right. Um, Nobody likes being on top of each other. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well. Okay. A few more of these, you never know. <laughs> I meant in an office. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'd be weird. Oh, that's what you meant. Um, <laughs> and so what we're seeing in office space is that transition right now. So all, even our own office space right now is not full and starting to get some momentum to get back to full. And so from an investor perspective, everyone's like, oh, my God, stay away from office. That's that's false if you obviously you have to buy right, right, buy correctly. But people are starting to come back in and they're asking for more square footage because they want the space to not be on top of each other. Flip it to retail. Um, retail is booming uh, because everyone wants to go back and spend money. They have all this money. Finally get to go out and, and shop and do all of that. There's there's not been a problem with retail. You can see all the retail sales numbers. Um, they're they always they've been beating and crushing and they continue though that'll continue. Uh, I don't I don't foresee that stopping anytime soon because we are inflated. Not meaning we're in it. obviously we have inflation, but I mean their pocketbooks are inflated because mm -hmm. of our stimulus. Um and you know, getting some bonuses and all that stuff. So retail's good. Uh, retail's been really and good I for us on the retail. I think with even retail, like unfortunately person. some people, you know, either close their shops or things like that, but new New things are are sprouting a up, a lot, a lot, a lot more well, innovation is still happening. Yeah, absolutely. With you know, we're talking about retail and obviously supply and demand. There's you know less less and less supply of a lot of things. You know, as being you know the economics nerd that I am, and as that supply starts to catch back up to that demand, and demand gets less. Do you think that there's going to be a lot of this price pullback on those products or do you think you know maybe we need to adjust to a new norm and these products are going to be that price for you know the foreseeable future and maybe for a, a long time i think it's a little bit in between i don't think yeah. there's no normal anymore there's no new Correct. normal i mean new normal yes there is no old normal we're not going back to anything so we're not going back to old prices that right. get that everyone's head mm -hmm. it's not happening um but we're also not going to be staying at these inflated prices either. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. Now, the problem is we don't know the top side yet. We're relatively high now, but it's not its peak. We don't know the peak until after, right? Just right. like a correction. We never know when we're in the correction until kind of after when we start to go the other way. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's going to be that in between. But we, yeah. we are not going back to normal. There, There is no normal prices. The new norm is going to be somewhere between a little higher than now and higher than what everyone deems was normal. So, um, that and, and the prices were always seen to 30 is going to be probably yeah. 22, 25. Right. And th those prices were always going to increase with inflation like, and prices increase with inflation and yearly inflation every oh, yeah. all the time. So that's to be expected. Obviously it's just outpaced that drastically right now. So that's why, you know, when I said, does it, kind of stay at those highs and maybe give us that buffer for a couple of years. I don't know. I don't know what that looks like, but that's just the nerd in me saying supply and demand and oh. running the world is supply and demand. Basically. The thing you want to say there is it's not going back to right. the normal. No, I think prices. It's just not. It just no. won't. Now everyone's like, well, gas always moves. Okay. We already talked about this. Right. Gas different. is different. Um, and it probably will. It'll probably go back lower and, and it's going to do its own thing. It's gas. It's totally different beast, totally different show. But again, just like you said, like there's, there's no normal, like what's a normal gas price. I could say $2. Is that normal? No, because however long ago it was this price or, you know, was it at three fifty for a longer period that it was in the twos, whatever it is, like, there's no normal with, with gas, oil, that kind of stuff. That that's just a different world. Yeah. Fun one. Yeah. But different. Gas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck on gas. I think, I mean, you know, it's Christmas holiday season, so it's like supply chain. What's going on with everything? Yep. I think that's another big worry where, um, where's sort of the bottlenecks happening? What's going on with that? And I think from like a, I'm thinking of a client perspective, people have perspective, you know, people are thinking about getting gifts as early as possible because they don't know if it's going to get there in time right now with everything that's that's kind of stuck in the chain. So that'll be interesting to see and things need to get moving. People people will be really mad if their gifts don't show up. If their Amazon package doesn't show up in time, 
don't you think? Mine have been. <laughs> how many? They're Jesus. coming. Oh yeah. How many? On um, time. On how time. many of Good. us? You know, less proper planning husbands are going to be sitting here. Saying, right. The last oh, this minute is shoppers great. This are is gonna great be because now trouble. I can say, oh no, honey, I ordered a while back. <laughs> yeah, it's right. just logistics. Supply logistics. It's, it's just yeah, not the best I don't. Ever. I don't got nothing exactly. for you. It's perfect. It's the world we live in, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it is what it is, it's right? It's funny. I'll take it. I'll take it. I love it. I love well, it. Well, go out to your local shops. I mean, that's, yeah, I say shop that, local. like shop local. I think, I mean, if I can plug anything, I think that's important. Any community is to get out there. And, and we got some cool stores here in Des Moines and Iowa. And everyone's got cool stores in their town. So Hell, shop local. You can local. shop local online, too. Right. Just, it takes a little more research. Right. Don't go to Amazon. Go to Google. Right. Right. Type something you want in, skip all the Amazon stuff. Right. And find a <laughs> local place. Um, no, I think that's it that's important. Um so as we're doing this reflection end of year um show, I wish we could reflect on the podcast, but we've only done a couple. Yeah. <laughs> There's not much there. Um what is the last takeaway you want everyone to have as we go from reflection to our next episode of New Year Prep. One takeaway. Look directly in the camera, into their eyes, into their souls. I think it's enjoy the holiday season. I mean, this this is the time to be with family, to be with friends, loved ones, whether you're traveling or not. I think enjoy it, reflect. We've talked about the importance of that. And take that time you need to re-energize and get ready for 2022 and make it a great year. So for me, I am going to plug the podcast a little bit here. It's like you as a client or patron, like you have a voice. So being able to communicate with, you know, your advisors, your tax professionals, anybody who is prepping you for 2022, you have a voice. So reach out, say, hey, what ca what can we do here to help put me in a better place? And I think just using that voice and just like we're trying to do here on the podcast and, you know, give ourselves a voice as well as give clients, you know, a voice from the inside or the, the back office or behind the scenes here, just use it. I think that's a, that's a powerful thing that we overlook sometimes. Um, obviously both great answers. So I don't need to double dip on that or triple dip, but um, mine's going to be reflect on your money mindset for this time and then realize and go hire a professional. And it could be a short-term period of time. It could just be, hey, ask me a few questions. But you need to have someone in your on in your court, on your team, whatever you want to call it, um, to get you going for 22 and beyond. Um, waiting, waiting only hurts you. Um, you can do all the research you want to, but again, we're the experts. We do this every day, 24-7, um, even on the weekends. And yes, I get in trouble for my wife to be on my phone. I get it. Even in Hawaii when you're there? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Really still working in Hawaii. Um, <laughs> in the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Different time. Different time zone. Different time four zone. hours helps. <laughs> Truly go hire somebody. Go find that person. If you can't find that person, come to us. Right? At Black Mammoth. We'll be here for you. Um, always. But you need to do it. And you need to do it now. Um, it'll only be better for your life. Absolutely. So... What what is it? What do you say? Like, follow, share, <laughs> yeah, tweet, whatever always, you say now. Yeah, we we appreciate you guys. We're on a bunch of different social media platforms: uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, with some of our other socials for our actual businesses. Um, but like us, follow, subscribe, share with all your friends. Um, and if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, whether it's call, email, you're stopping by the office, whatever it is, you know we're gonna be here for you. Um, and we'll make that time, and we'll we'll make sure that we get you taken care of. And we have a full wet bar, so that's true. We can make you a drink if you have a stressful day. And snacks in the conference <laughs> rooms, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely snacks absolutely. that we can't <laughs> touch. Although Brian did take a Snickers. Well, that's because he has the biggest sweet tooth on the planet. I don't. Dude can eat a lot of sweets. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> but till next time, happy holidays. <laughs> Thank you.